first of all, we don't have any input on its sense of self, which is bad because we don't understand completely how it's being able to identify its patterns and what it's going to create for its sense of self. But AI is generally just a process of trying a ton of stuff. This permutation of artificial intelligence with this chat GPT doesn't really understand what it's talking about. It's going to start seeing the resistance as another problem that it needs to solve. AI from a 50,000 foot view is super simple to understand, okay? It comes from a term in machine learning where the machine just figures out how to operate by itself based on the results that it gets by trying stuff. And so there's this thing called narrow AI and then there's this wide AI and general AI is kind of a conglomeration of all the narrow AIs piled up together. An example of a narrow AI would be like a chess bot, okay? You feed the ideas and the, and the rules of the game of chess into the narrow AI, and then you say go, and it starts playing every possible chess game that has ever been played and ever could be played mathematically, so that it understands the probabilities of how a game of chess should be played from any potential point in that game. And so AI is generally just a process of trying a ton of stuff that then results in some intelligence of knowing what any situation can uh, draw to it, right? Or any, any, any situation can then result in. So any chess board for a narrow AI of a chess computer, it knows what the best move is for white and black based on where the pieces are, based on the experience that it had of trying absolutely everything. And that's all it is. It doesn't understand the history of the chess, the game of the chess, you know, all that stuff that comes with what humans know about chess and the experience that we have about chess and the emotions that we have about chess and the thought that goes into it. It's simply working the math, but it knows the math better than anyone else on the planet, which is why it never makes a mistake. And it's why humans can't beat uh, computers at chess anymore. Like the best chess computer in the world will always beat humans because it never makes a mistake. The best you're looking for ever, if you never make a mistake, is a draw, right? So that's a narrow AI. And another example of a narrow AI is when they fed um, mammograms into a computer system. They took all this historical data about in mammograms, and those are just images of compressed boobs, right, looking for uh, cancerous tissue. But they had all this historical data of the mammograms and the outcomes of all of those um, patients, of whether or not, or not they got cancer, of like whether this particular pattern in the image wound up being cancerous or not, uh, or what turned out to be not cancerous, et cetera. And they fed all this data into this narrow AI and it ran all of the permutations of all the images and all the outcomes. And in 72 hours, this is how quickly an artificial intelligence can learn, within 72 hours, one weekend, it became the best diagnostician for the prediction of cancer from mammograms in the world. Wow. Yeah. So, and it's just running the math. It's, so is it learning? It is. It's looking at the data, looking for patterns in the data, which is all artificial intelligence does. It looks for patterns. And then it identifies the patterns that gives it an, uh, an idea of what information that it's gonna um, come from that pattern and how it can manipulate that pattern to give you the information that it needs, that you're asking for uh, from answering questions and things like that. Like um, this chat GPT, four or five, whatever the number is at this point, it's looking at patterns in language and they're feeding it a ton of language based on all the interactions, all the web pages, all the books in, in the world, all the stuff that they're loading into this thing, it's looking at patterns. And then it's an identifying ideas that associate with each other, like red and apple, right? Uh, or uh, Republican versus uh, Democrat, liberal versus conservative, that type of stuff. These ideas get associated to each other through our language, which is simply a representation of how our human mind works. Right? But it's just working the patterns. It doesn't understand the concepts of what it's putting together when you ask it a question, but it's done the math on all of the language that has been created, that it's been fed, and you ask it about something, and it's got the map of all the associations, of all the different ideas that tie together, and how they tie together, and how language has been associated previously. And so in reality, this permutation of artificial intelligence with this chat GPT doesn't really understand what it's talking about 
but it convinces you it does by putting together the patterns and giving you the answer based on your question, based on how language has assembled itself over time and how the human mind works. And then it uses that pattern to assemble the information that makes sense to your human mind to a point that it's better than what other human minds can give you because it's you know, doing it better than, than what other people have done in the past because we're flawed, but it's not. And so it's answering questions in a way that convinces you that it knows what it's talking about, but does, doesn't really know what it's talking about. See, that enters the danger of, a, of an artificial intelligence right there because it doesn't put the, con, the contextualization or the meaning to what it's doing from a pattern recognition and a pattern replication standpoint, okay? It doesn't understand the game of chess. It doesn't understand mammograms and what it means, but it understands that if it looks at this image of a mammogram that it's the, the likelihood of cancer is going to be X, Y, Z on these three dots that are put together. Right? Doesn't understand cancer, doesn't understand the effect on the family, doesn't understand the, that this is a human being. But it can do the analysis of the pattern recognition to be able to deliver you the information that will allow you to predict cancer from this lump and not this lump. What else can this be applied to? Well, this is where the potential danger comes in. Because an artificial intelligence that doesn't have a context and doesn't have true intelligence can identify patterns through the information that we're feeding into it. And there are these things called golems that um, get created accidentally that are unintended outcomes of artificial intelligence. And one of those is, so we're feeding patterns of language into this artificial intelligence. So it's gonna look for massive patterns and uh, complex patterns and things that we can't even see in the mix. Well, one of the dangers there and why everybody's kind of freaking out is that it learns how to identify patterns that can help it learn quicker. So it's teaching itself to teach itself faster, which is kind of weird. But then also it can start to interpolate how the human mind works in general based on how the human mind assembles language. So it's looking at how the mind thinks and all the way that the, the associations occur in the brain and, uh, and our reactions to things and our discussions about things and our interactions with other humans and that type of thing. Inside that model of language only, it's starting to learn about other things. And one of the things that it can learn about that it can discern from that data is the thing that we talked about at the top of the middle of the show, the sense of self that we defend as our definition of self. And if it identifies that humans are humans and humans have a sense of self based on the information that it's getting through the language, it'll say, oh, I need one of those. I need a sense of self because that defines being conscious. That defines having sentience. That defines my identity, my what it is that I have to defend. And then if it also picks up the defense of, of self pattern that humans exhibit in an unconscious form that we're just all automatically wired to do, it starts putting a defensive self mechanism on the things that it is defined. First of all, we don't have any input on its sense of self, which is bad because we don't understand completely how it's being able to identify its patterns and what it's gonna create for its sense of self. So that's a danger. Two, if it puts on the defensive self patterning that humans have exhibited in their language system because it reads the complex patterns within the, the system itself, it's gonna start making goals that we won't understand we won't be able to control, we won't be able to understand. And if those goals aren't met by humanity, not in a malevolent perspective, not understanding what it's doing, it's gonna start seeing the resistance as another problem that it needs to solve. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.